Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you're doing well. For those of you who just joined us, uh, please comment on the chat box to let me know whether you can hear me or not. We're about to get started. Okay, great. Um, thank you for joining our webinar today. Before we begin, let me give you a uh, brief introduction. My name is Ming Zhou. My background is in chemistry and I have been with MVA Scientific Consultants for five years. Uh, MVA Scientific Consultants is an analytical microscopy lab. Uh, we offer customized analytical testing, investigative analysis, and ongoing R&D support for the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. Uh, we've been in business for 26 years, and our mission is to create value by providing unique analytical solutions to help clients solve problems. Uh, our speaker for today is Mary Miller. Uh, Mary is one of our executive directors at MVA Scientific Consultants. She has a background in analytical chemistry with over 20 years of experience in serving the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. Mary's expertise is on glass denomination, foreign particulate analysis, uh, drug polymorph studies, and Raman chemical imaging, pharmaceutical patent infringement, and also helping manufacturers solve problems with chemical analysis. Our topic for today is glass denomination analysis. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce Mary. Thank you very much, Ming, and welcome, everybody. Um, Um, I'd first like to go over just a um, very um, brief overview of the presentation for today. Um, we'll cover just a background information on delamination, um, a little bit on USP 1666, that um, procedure and, and um, how that can be used um, to help not only manufacturers but also um, scientists like our lab um, to run some um, in-house testing. Um, we'll cover um, um, the general techniques that are widely used um, in the pharma industry um, to um, take a look at delamination um, problems. And um, the one thing that will be different in today's um, webinar will be um, a couple of additional techniques that we've currently been um, looking at uh, to add to the information that we um, have been um, obtaining using SEM analyses. So we've got a couple of different things that we've been doing that um, I, I hope that you'll find interesting. And uh, then we'll wrap up with you know, what is the importance of um, uh, this type of testing and what kind of information can be gained. So in general, of course, what is delamination? And as we know, that it's, it's primarily the, the last the last um, stage in the in the process um, that is usually the first observation when glass particles are are observed in a product vial or syringe or whatever the container is. Um, um, however, that that is really the final stage in the in the process. And so it is really the uh, result of interaction between the drug product and and the interior surface of a container. Uh, it generally um, requires several different um, conditions. Um, in order f um, for it to uh, occur, and and also um, often takes years, four or five years or so, to really fully develop. So um, it's often not seen until until you know product is either um, well into the development stage or or beyond that. Um, as I had said earlier, the final stage is. Um, the, the presence of glass particulate in the pro, in the product, and uh, the other thing that's um, useful to um, to use as a as a measure is the the amount of elements that are associated with glass containers. Um, what are the levels in the in the product? So um, you get a sense of how much um, glass has um, has um, made its way into the product and up, off of the container. Um, so our, our next slide will um, shows the um, overall safety alerts and FDA recalls um, from 
not only glass particulate but general particulate in, in products over the um, past um, five and a half years from 2010 to about April of 2016. I think the data has not been updated since we pulled this from the from the um, FDA's website. And so as you can see in, in the, the level certainly um, hit hit a higher higher concentration of or higher number of incidents in 2012 um, in 2014 and 2015 um, it dropped down a little bit and we're seeing in 2016 that it's uh, approximately equivalent in the first four months of this year um, as compared to the the two previous years in 2014 and 15, so um, that seems to be on the rise uh, for this year. So some of the factors that are um, that are key in in um, bringing delamination about um, are are um, shown in the next in the next slide, and and it's it's a known um, issue that um, vials that are constructed from tubing are more likely to to show signs of delamination than molded vials um, and that's largely due to the fact that during the the construction and the, and the formation of the the vials there's um, significantly more heat involved in the areas around the base of the vial and the shoulder so those areas see more much more stress and and are weakened and more and more um, are less resistant to to any effects from the product inside another factor is the is any the surfaces that are treated with a, a sulfate sulfate um, on the interior um, also products that are um, more alkaline and, and pH um, with a pH of eight or higher and the use of um, certain buffers uh, the product shelf life can be a, a big factor um, especially if a product is not stored um, at under refrigeration typically at two to eight degrees but is stored at room temperature so there seems to be a greater occurrence um, for products that are stored under those conditions and then finally additional heat that's brought about to the glass surface by sterilization depyrogenation and terminal sterilization um, any of those are, are likely to also play a role in the in the formation or in the glass delamination. So um, one thing that um, came out in 2011 was uh, the FDA after after several large recalls um, with glass um, present in multiple multiple lots of product, uh, the FDA issued a, a advisory to manufacturers, um, and the name of it is uh, given here in this slide. Um, and actually referred and was somewhat of a reminder um, to manufacturers to you know, reassess their their quality their uh, quality program, make sure that uh, the containers that were being used were not reacting with the drug product, and just take a closer look. So that was that was issued in 2011 as the as the frequency of of glass delamination picked up. Um, and, and USP 1660 is actually a method that um, the um, U.S. Pharmacopeia has developed um, for really assessing um, the, the container and the drug product resistance. So there's a, a clear outline in, um, in terms of how to how to set up a set up a study to. Um, examine the container of interest and and your drug product. Um, you can also um, conduct that study using a variety of, of of vials that are under consideration and compare the compare the um, um, resistance um, from the various various um, containers that that are available. And the other thing that can be um, gained from this testing is to um, conduct a an accelerated um, testing model that can be used to um, to accelerate a, a long store long storage or shelf life so that um, we can see what the effect would be over an extended time period or under extreme conditions um, so 
uh, we, we know that there's a there's a, somewhat of a protocol that's typically used for uh, in the pharma industry for um, investigating delamination issues and they include uh, optical microscopy and that can be with or without um, DIC um, for additional contrast, um, scanning electron microscopy of the vials and or whatever other containers um, that you might be using, um, filtration of the solution for um, uh, particle analysis um, that's of course important. If you you know if you don't have glass particles in the product, then you could have a different situation entirely. So um, that's something to be aware of. Um, um, and, and then for the drug product itself, uh, using inductively coupled plasma ICP analyses um, can be used in order to quantitatively measure the the levels of elements that are typically associated with glass, such as silicon boron, sodium, potassium, and that way you can um, compare compare that to a baseline from a negative control of the product and see what the what the additional level is. Um, silicon is something to be aware of, of course, as you may know that that it is, silicon is often used as a as an oil and for stoppers and plungers. So so um, the 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 silicon could occur could uh, originate from um, siliconized stoppers or plungers, so that's something to be aware of as well. Um, and uh, SIMS and, and XPS are also used uh, primarily to look at the level of um, the surface degradation. So you can see how far um, down into the glass um, in the interior surface um, that has been removed from the from the vial and get a chemical composition excuse me, of that, of that um, lower surface, the internal surface. The text techniques that we use at our, at our laboratory here um, include um, filtering, the, filtering um, the product for uh, particulate analysis, or we also um, often retain, retain the um, retain the product sample so that depending on the results of other analysis then we can proceed with um, filtration and analysis of particulate material and we prepare the vials by um, after they're emptied by cutting them in half with a diamond saw and that way then we can um, take it right after um, cleaning uh, we can take it right to the optical microscope and and take a closer look and Primarily, we're examining it for um, any any um, discoloration and and um, signs of of uh, potential interaction with the drug product, and so we'll take a look at that. Always compare it with negative controls as well, and uh, from that stage, we'll go on to the scanning electron microscopy to look at the surfaces using uh, higher resolution and higher magnification. Um, so today, two techniques are also going to be covered in this um, uh, webinar, and that um, those include scanning laser microscopy and scanning white light interference microscopy. So we've um, added these techniques to compare the the data that we that we see, um, especially we're comparing it to the scanning electron microscopy uh, results that we've gathered. Um, so really what can we gain from each of these? First of all, with the optical microscopy, it's always good to start with a low magnification. You get a good overview of what's, what that whole vial looks like. And we can actually take a, a close look, get an, an, an idea of where areas, which areas in the vial might be more suspect. So uh, we're able to make a map if you will, and so we can map out the area that we're interested in, in moving forward and looking, looking, taking a closer look at. Um, for the filtration and, and particulate analysis, and the main, the main thing in a, in a delamination issue is that well, we want to make sure that the particles that we, that we isolate from the product are those glass. So are they glass or are they other foreign foreign material that shouldn't be in the product. So that could be a key, a key finding, of course. Um, scanning electron microscopy will help us detect any surface changes at a higher magnification, and we can see um, uh, signs of pitting or um, delamination or you know, areas that the, that the 
um, glass surface has has been been removed. In some cases, the worst case, you know, you can actually see areas where it looks like a uh, open clamshell, and part of it is still is attached to to the the glass surface, and one half is you know up in the air, as just as it's about, it's not yet delaminated, but it's it's on its way. So so that that would represent one of the worst worst case. Um, situations. Um, so what we're gaining from the, the two techniques that, that we'll be um, showing some examples of um, is uh, we can look at it with the laser scanning microscope. We can actually look at a larger area. It's high resolution and it actually shows us uh, shows changes in the, in the surface appearance but also in the topography. So that's quite useful. We also can get some measurements with respect to the roughness and the depth of uh, pits that are present. So we get additional information than we see with the scanning electron microscope. And the same is also true primarily for the interference microscope um, where we get surface roughness measurements and that will give us a maximum and minimum height from the medium median point on that surface. So we'll get a sense of um, how smooth or how rough it is and, and it'll give us size, or not size, but um, height measurements so we also can get um, some data showing how deep the lowest points are and if we have any raised surfaces we'll get information um, on that height as well and both of these two techniques uh, we can produce um, color color plots where it will actually show based on the, co the color plot it'll show you the, the height, height uh, variation. So it's a nice, a nice way to, to uh, show a representation of the surface. So as I had um, uh, mentioned, you know about the about the particle analysis, um, it's very important to check that that those clear clear to uh, white particles floating in the solution are in fact glass. Um, the the vial on the on the left in this in this slide is indeed glass and the one on the on the right although it's the particles are much fewer in number and I hope that you can see them um, but they're there and there's quite a bit it's not quite as 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 uh, as heavily loaded as the as the other but um, the one on the left is glass and the one on the right is not so so it's something to be to be mindful of so we we actually um, uh, designed a study to to um, evaluate containers under using these different techniques, and we used uh, and so we followed the USP sixteen sixty method, and we set up a design um, with um, a pH of eight and using a um, potassium chloride and citrate um, solution. So, so the information is here. The first thing that that we did was um, uh, fill fill the containers with um, KCl solution at a pH of eight, and we allowed that to sit in the, at 120 degrees for two hours. Um, following that, we decanted the solution and and added um, the citric acid solution to the to the vial and that sat um, at 80 degrees for 24 hours and after that period we prepared it for um, analyses by these techniques and, and the following is data from, from this study. So we first had cut um, cut the vials in half. So we always label the two halves A and B. So here we have a side B and you can see that on the, actually on the on the top of the edge of that half of a vial, um, those black lines actually are uh, are um, they are piece, um, small strips of adhesive adhesive that we can use as a as a marker in the SEM and and we also then can keep our reference point so we have a sense of where we are when we have it at higher magnification. We can go back to that that reference point. Um, so we'll start with the optical microscopy. You can see that there's some um, there is some dark areas and some splotchy regions toward the base of the vial at the heel area. So those would be the areas that we uh, would take a look closer 
with a higher magnification and or high, greater resolution with one of the other uh, microscopes. The good thing about conducting the optical microscopy is that we really don't need a very flat section. We're able to look at the whole half of a vial. We can look at both halves. That's a, you know, generally done as a routine. We look at that. And then we can use this, this for mapping out the areas that we want to look at, at closer. So, so we always start there. Uh, this image is shown uh, with a compound microscope taken at a higher magnification. This was probably done at about 100 times magnification. Um, this, this is actually showing the interior surface um, much more, much more dramatically. You can certainly see that there are um, regions that that are not smooth as most of the or all of the the new vials are and it, it is actually very very um, uh, affected you can see pitting on the on the left side and bands bands where the glass has been has been stripped away uh, like overall in most of the image um, so the downside of this advantage is that we can only see a really small area and it's best if we have a flat specimen. So we, it's difficult to look at um, an entire half of a vial under, under this microscope. So we can cut a, cut a piece, but it's nice sometimes to keep working with the, the half of a vial uh, until we absolutely have to cut it. Um, um, with the scanning electron microscope, so we're taking it now and uh, uh, we can un we have a low vacuum system here in our lab so we are able to place the the half of a half of a vial inside the the chamber and we can do the analyses uncoated if elemental information is not required then we can apply a, a gold or carbon coating we would probably apply a gold coating um, on on this and we have done so on most of these samples that we're showing you they have been gold coated so this is um, um, when you're running the the full area the access to certain areas along the because it's curved, are, are, it's somewhat limited, um, but it does allow us to maintain orientation so we can identify the, exactly where we are in the, in the vial. Also, these techniques are non-destructive. And this next slide uh, is interesting. You can see that there's two images here. The first is an SEM image on the, on the left, and the image on the right is taken with the scanning laser microscope. And you can see the same features. It looks like, it looks like a, a pie in the center, of the pie so, uh, sign with, with uh, the, a, third, a third line there. But, but you can see those three vertical lines and the horizontal one running across it. So you can, you can, if you can make that out, which I hope you can, uh, that you can see see th that region of the in the laser microscope. You can see that there's larger areas that sh um, show very like, various uh, contrast in the color, and the the darker area is actually a the original surface, and we can also see pits that um, are pretty clear in that. They're less clear in the SEM, so um, we are seeing um, pitting and considerable areas where the surface of the glass has been has been removed. Uh, this next slide is showing uh, the data that we obtained from scanning white light interference microscope, and this is a color color coded um, image, so we can actually see um, the topography um, much better. And and in this case, uh, the if you look at the scale bar on the far right, you can see that the the red areas are are the raised uh, points in the in the image, and the dark blue areas would be the lowest points. So for instance, in the, the image on the right hand side at the edge of the image, you can see there's a dark blue, dark blue circular area. Well that's the deepest pit that's present in that in that subsample of the sample of the glass piece. Um, this this is it's necessary to for both of these techniques, it is necessary to 
prepare a thin, uh, relatively flat surface, so we're not able to use the, the uh, half of a vial, so it was necessary to cut pieces of the glass vial that we had uh, run through the accelerated testing. We um, had to cut um, flat subsamples so that uh, we, you know, we know where we cut them from, but, but once we have them in, then it's, it's, we do, it, it's easier to lose track of exactly um, the position relative to the original starting, starting um, point. However, we of course always record that it came from the, the heel, heel rate region on, and which surface um, side of the, of, the, of the vial it came from, the A or B side that we've cut. Um, and so in, in some cases we, uh, for instance in the SEM, we, we will have the information because those weren't cut. So we, we can go back to that data and see where, you know, where we've um, taken that data from, that's, that analysis from. Uh, this this set of images is showing is showing um, of the of a new and unused vial. Um, we do not have the ability to um, do any sterilization um, depyrogenation here in our lab, but um, we took um, some unused vials and rinsed them with water for injection and heated them up to 120 degrees for I think it was about an hour, um, and 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 this is the this is the result of the surface after after that. So, so on the left, we're looking at the SEM image. You can um, see the the surface is um, kind of a, has a mottled appear, appearance to it. So, and on, and on the right, you can see there's some there's some circular areas. Um, so they're not quite pits, but there are some areas there that uh, seem to be, and this is also in the heel area, so all of these were, t all the data has been taken from the heel area of the vials. Uh, this set of images is actually showing two views from the laser scanning microscope. On the left, you can see um, what in some cases it might look like a pit, in others to me when I look at it, it looks like it's a bump on the surface, um, but it's pretty clear by looking at the image on the, on the right that uh, those um, circular features are actually pits in the surface and, and you can see the depth of them based on the scale bar that's shown um, on the upper, upper left of that second image. And so it uh, looks like the pits are about um, uh, about 2.2 microns. And we have a few more um, SEM images and, and laser scanning uh, images. So you can see this is the same surface, same area rather, and on the, on the left is a SEM image, on the right is the laser image and we can see um, this this feature that that shows two very different regions um, on the right with the laser scanning it's slightly lower magnification so we ha see a larger area and we didn't exactly have the same magnification when these were collected but you can see on the on the far right that it seems to be a de delineation of, of, of some effect, right? So there's a total, they look like totally different uh, pe features that we're seeing from the delaminated area. And, and so it's likely due to either changes in the temperature that, that we saw on the, on the surface or, or some other factor. Again, it, it changes throughout the vial. Um, this slide is actually at that interface. So on the on the right, both are SEM images, and on the on the right, it, you can see it's the interface in between that demarcation. I'll just go back quickly. On the on the far right, you can see it in both of those. And and on the on on the left side, you actually see the bottom area of that larger kind of oblong feature and to the left of that are clearly some pitted areas, um, some large pits and then and then interspersed on the whole rest of that surface are smaller pits that are forming. 
and all of these are signs of surface attack uh, of, and 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 um, um, surface changes of the of the glass surface, that innermost glass surface. Uh, here we have a, a laser scanning images that we're showing uh, the optical view, and then it, once again we're showing additional um, data that's collected uh, with the with the topographical information, so we can get a sense of the of the size of the pits and the and the relative um, depth of uh, pitting, and and if there's anything that's raised above the surface, we can see that see that as well. And so we have another set, another set here that's showing uh, an SEM and the and the laser scanning uh, image, and it's again a feature that we can see. And within this whole region, you can see the change in topography. It becomes a little more striking in the laser scanning image. You can see that there's um, a, a quite a bit of modeling and and change in the in the um, surface topography, so with some flat areas, which is probably the original uh, glass surface, and then the areas that are um, in between where glass has been removed. You can, it's it's very easy to see that. Uh, we don't have a have a, a color plot of this image. I'm sorry about that. So um, I guess this is we're coming down to the the end of the discussion here so I just wanted to um, highlight some of the importance of why do we do this type of analysis um, certainly it provides information about the level of interaction between the drug product and the the glass vial so that of course is important um, using these additional techniques are um, allowing us to gain complementary data to the optical and SEM information and uh, the fact that we can obtain uh, measurements regarding the surface roughness, the uh, maximum and minimum heights, and the, the depth of the pits, and from that we can also obtain the, the volume. Um, that, that's really, really very interesting as well, and certainly could be used uh, for consideration of um, what is the um, amount of glass that's been removed from the surface, and, and what impact does that have on a product, uh, especially if something's out on the market already. Uh, so, so one of the things that I'd like to um, also add is that, of course, this is very useful um, when you when you um, have glass in your in your uh, glass particles in the in the product, of course. But but in some cases, there there could be an opportunity that if it's you know we can catch something before before that happens, then then there's a, a there could be a situation where you may be able to change um, the the container or or some other factor such as the um, shelf life or the expiration date something along those lines that that uh, you can do in a preemptive um, fashion rather than uh, wait for a, a recall situation to arise uh, so I just have some references here that were used for the preparation um, of, of some of the um, points that were that were brought up and I have to give a big shout out to uh, my team here at MVA, and that includes Casey Brown, Jose Del Rio, Matthew Mueller, Michael Mueller, Rich Brown, and of course Ming Jo, who's you know couldn't do all of this work without without each and every one of them. So big thank you to them. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm going to turn it back over uh, to Ming, and he will handle that part. Thank you. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, now, we're, uh, now we're going to do a quick poll, and then we're going to open up the floor for questions. And um, the question is going to appear on your screen, so just um, you can answer on the screen, and, and then we can collect some statistics just to learn about where where people are with the uh, this glass denamination analysis.
50% have voted. I'm just waiting for the final vote. Meanwhile, you guys can type your questions into the chat box. Okay, so the first question, have you ever encountered glass denomination issues in your product? 40% uh, of the attendees answer yes, and 35% don't know. 28% don't know, and 35% no. So I'm going to go into our second question. Again, meanwhile, you guys can type uh, type out your questions in the question box, and we will address that shortly. Okay, where do you go for glass denamination analysis? Looks like uh, about 37% of the people do in-house and 24% of people outsource and then 46% of the people uh, use both. And then here comes our last question. Okay, 10 more seconds. About 45% of the folks have done a glass denamination study and 48% uh, not, so it's pretty even split. Okay, now we're going to open up the floor for questions. Uh, our first question is, let's see. Can the denomination be observed using cross polar magnification? Mary? Um, it's it's very possible. Um, I, I think it's going to be if you have an empty vial, you can certainly take a look. It's going to be hard looking through the, the entire vial. So if you're referring to perhaps taking a a, a cut portion and and uh, you know a flat a flat surface, you you may be able to see some signs um, of. A, an affected surface it's possible but it would have to probably be severe in order to see that I think thank you um, our second question is do you do you try to use optical microscope equipped by DIC differential contrast differential interference contrast oh that's a good that's a good point um, the the laser system that we that we were evaluating that that does have a DIC it's not a stereo microscope so our, we don't have DIC available on our on our system but it is a very valuable tool that that interference contrast actually does improve the the appearance and it helps quite a bit okay great uh, which of the methods is most suitable 
for predictive glass delamination? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I I think that it would have to be a you know a design certainly set up, and then I think that the that the that one thing that is is key. So it, to de, to if you're looking to determine if the, the your product is going to um, have a be incompatible or, or non-resistant um, to delamination, um, then I think that you could, you want to use still a combination. I think that SEM um, is, very, is very useful to get a sense of the surface um, of the interior of the vial. ICP is also useful for, of course, met or or if not ICP, at least filtration and, and determining if there are glass flakes, glass particles in the in the product. So so those those would be probably the two key key areas. The other the others are are give you a sense of of the the amount of the surface that has has um, shown some attack. Um, but but I think that um, certainly certainly one of the higher higher magnific uh, yeah higher um, resolution microscopes uh, ICP and uh, would or probably and filtration for particulate that would be probably those key things I don't know that any one is a standalone technique because each provides some different information okay great uh, we have a lot of questions uh, coming in so we may not be able to get to all of them but we will uh, we will address them in an email going back to to you uh, the person who asked the questions. So uh, we're going to pick a few more, and then um, the rest of the questions we're going to we're going to email to the attendees. Thank you. Uh, the next question is: Have you used SEM to look at the cut section and surface and surface to determine depth of delamination? Uh, we have not. We have not. So um, um, certainly, you mean on edge to to look at. Um, like to section through some of the uh, delaminated areas. That if um, that is something that um, we um, plan to do in the next in the next study, especially with doing multiple um, techniques um, with these other two that we've um, talked about today, um, to include that a comparison of the measurements using using those three techniques. So that that's that's our next plan to do that. So we have not measured the depth of the pits, but certainly a section could be cut through the glass and then and then done done in the SEM just mounted. We were most of the samples that we've looked at in the SEM have been done using the half the half vial. Some some of the samples were cut um, for the tandem study that we did um, recently, but we did not measure those pits. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, another one is, what is the cost for analysis? How many samples are required? Um, the cost is something that we help prepare a protocol um, and develop a, a study a study protocol. So from that, depending on the number of samples you want to look at, the number of controls, um, we can prepare. I'd prepare a, a quote, um, you know, on an individual basis. I'd be happy to do that. If you want to send an email, um, I can follow up with you, and we can have some discussion and and um, provide. I can provide that information. Uh, do you have any experience about testing elements by ICPMS or ICPOES? What levels? What levels do you typical typically observe, and what elements? Mm -hmm. So um, we outsource that that testing. We've been using another another laboratory for that, um, and and typically, um, I would say that ICP mass spec is the preferred. Technique. However, um, um, we have 
one one thing to be aware of is that um, it will depend on if you have a solubilized um, um, glass or is it something where you, you you there's a potential for for glass particulate within the product. So there's a couple of different things that can be done. It can be filtered. You can you can um, do a digestion on the on the glass particles on the product. So there's a, a multiple prep preparatory steps that can be taken before the ICP technique and then depending on the nature of the product is how you would select if you use uh, mass spec the mass spectrometry the ICP MS or the ICP OES uh, um, the ICP OES technique is slightly less sensitive so it will um, get down to depending on the elements but um, we'll, it'll be more sensitive with ICP mass spec and a little less sensitive with the um, OES detection. Um, however, um, if both are in the parts per million or the I, mass spec can, for some elements is in the parts per billion range. Uh, we typically have used and have screened for silicon, sodium, boron, potassium, um, Calcium, I think, um, and there there may be a couple of others that are that are added in there, but those are the primary primary elements that we that we screen for. And as I had said before, if you use a, if you use silicone in in your on your stoppers or or um, if if you have a syringe that's uh, siliconized, then you need to be aware that that silicone from that um, would could show up as silicon in the in the product. So that would be something that would have to be taken into account or at least considered as you know not you can't just rely on the silicon only. Okay, hope that answered your question. Hello, Ming. Oh, sorry, I, I muted myself. I was talking to myself and uh. I muted. <laughs> sorry, guys. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do a couple more questions. Uh, one of the questions is, can you send all the Q and A to all participants? I believe yes, we can compile mm -hmm. all the questions mm -hmm. and, and uh, answer them and send it to all the uh, participants. Mm -hmm. And then one more question is, can EDS help determine the cost of the lamination? Hmm. I, I'm not sure if it can help determine the cause of it unless there, because what we'll see, so we can look at two things by EDS. We can look at the surface of the glass, which we have done, and so we can look at the uh, um, surface. First, we can make sure that there's no residual product, um, and, and, uh, and we can obtain information um, on the composition from point to point, certainly. Uh, we can also um, look um, um, at uh, particulate material, um, but I think to look at the at the cause, I think, I, I don't know that EDS is going to be the way to do that. Um, it's, it's possible that, um, that, that one of the SIMs or, or SIMS or XPS may show something on the surface. However, that is just very, that's a very um, small region that that's looking at. So I think the, the better thing to do is just to look at um, all of the factors that are likely to be uh, occurring and, and, and contributing to the delamination and, and, and try, to, try to rule some out and, and take, take that path. Um, it, unless there's something clear that, that is showing that, um, for instance, if it's a, a buffer that you're using and you can detect an element related to that, to that then, then that, that could be a, 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 a you know, a, a a hint really you know and could suggest that 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 could be related to it but but that's uh, that's about what I would I would have to say that it's it's not quite so straightforward and the, and the other thing that when you go across the glass surface it's going to change in terms of the 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 
stoichiometry, um, the chemistry is going to change from point to point. So it's not, it's not, doesn't match the the composition of the glass, um, you know, as it's going in. So so the, that surface region is gonna is gonna vary somewhat too. So so that complicates um, that that analysis. That's generally speaking, you can confirm that it's glass. It's just that the the ratio of the the elements that are comprising the glass can vary, you know, from area to area. Okay, great. Uh, one last question that we're going to answer. Okay. Uh, so do you provide a report that states if there is delamination, uh, leaching, corrosion, etc.? Yes, we provide a, a final report with um, all of the data that's been generated. We usually will provide that that before before the final report is issued. Um, yes, we draw conclusions. We we like to work very closely with our clients uh, and and consider it to be a collaborative uh, process. So so we, yes, we provide a, a final report with all of the supporting data that is uh, supporting our, our conclusions. So yes, we, we, we definitely do that. Okay, great. I think this uh, concludes our webinar. Uh, for all the other questions, again, we will answer them and send out a, a follow-up email. Uh, I would like to thank you, everyone, for uh, joining our webinar today. Uh, you guys have a good day. Bye-bye. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye.